So I'm full-time math faculty here. I uh, just finished my fourth year at GCC. That happened by a collection of a couple chance events. Uh, Narek Isagulian was a master in the master scholarship and he was a mentee of mine. And we were discussing last summer what were some potential plans for him to do over summer. He had mentioned along the lines that he has some interest in robotics or things like that. So we were in discussion. Antonella Wilby was outside. She was taking a class I was teaching at that semester. And um, the conversation started from there. She had experience in high school with robotics competitions. And uh, the, the rest was basically history. So um, we started a club. Well, they started a club at Hoping Fair. They started a club, uh, put my name on the line as faculty advisor. And then they started rounding up troops. So that's how, that's how it all began. So the, the main goal of the club currently is to build an autonomous ground vehicle for competition in the Intelligent Ground Vehicle Competition. Uh, every year in Michigan there's a nationwide competition uh, to, to build a vehicle that autonomously navigates a um, ground terrain course. And so that's, that's the plan there. The club is, is building such a vehicle with hopes to compete in the next upcoming competition. So funding has come from a few sources, the, the biggest of which has been ASGCC. Uh, the club has received two CPS grants, so that was uh, very generous on the part of ASGCC. But Antonella was uh, very active in finding other funding sources, so that included private donations, uh, it included small, well, uh, other types of private company donations, um, so those donations might have been in the form of um, money or materials, uh, things like that. And then we've also had some other corporate sponsorships in the form of discounts and some free hardware, but uh, the, the biggest single source has been ASGCC so far. The one with the, the most involvement would be the physics department. Uh, they've provided workshop space for us and uh, quite, quite some materials and tools and, and then also lab space where the club is currently working on doing the uh, um, development of software and things like that. We've also had uh, some Mindstorm robots on loan from computer science department and we've been in contact with uh, vocational te technology. Uh, technology division. Some of our students have taken a uh, welding class up there and we hope to kind of foster that relationship a little bit more. I've had a variety of conversations with different people either in industry that were engineers or former engineers or teachers that teach classes that uh, lots of engineering students take or things like this and there seems to be some kind of a disconnect between learning engineering in the classroom and building things. So we have engineering students that take math classes, and they, and they take physics classes, and they take computer science classes. And those become conceptualized as completely distinct disciplines. And so the student spends a lot of time with uh, a lot of time with a textbook. And not very often do they get a lot of hands-on experience of actually building something. And even less often do they get hands-on experience of going from something that lives in your head to something that lives on paper to something that actually lives in physical form and then starts doing what you hope it will do. So I think that's one of the biggest things, that a student can actually be a part of uh, a full design prototype process. Um, the other aspects I think would be things like um, teamwork. This is one that uh, has been very interesting to watch, um, watching how a single team can come together to, to accomplish a goal. It, it it's rare, rarely goes as expected. Um, the problems that come up in that dynamic are highly non-trivial. They're related to personality, they're related to skills, they're related to time. Uh, there's a lot of things there. Um, it, it, it stresses communication skills, and so I think that's a, that's a big benefit. Um, all of those are just among uh, benefits the students would get from participation. 
organizational structure. We're a brand new organization. Uh, well, about a year old now. And at the beginning, um, the structure of the organization, or I should say the lack of the structure of the organization, had prevented some progress. And um, that, that has been a challenge that needs to be addressed more fully. It's been, I think, partially addressed and progress has been made, but it needs to be addressed more fully. So this is some of the things that we're thinking about for, for longer term plans. Um, it, like I said in a previous question, uh, it's, it's always very interesting to watch a group of people come together with different personalities and try and accomplish a common goal, particularly when it's, when, when it's sort of a, a free space to do it. When there's when there's not a lot of structure, when there might not be a boss, uh, so so these are challenges. They're interesting challenges. I think they're valuable challenges, but they're certainly challenges. And one might say that does lead to problems in some cases. So. Yeah, the pace of the of the progress has been, I think, excellent over the last, mm, say, the spring semester, about the last five six months. Uh, in the beginning, because um, of some some organizational difficulties and, and difficulties in communicating between different resources on campus. We're trying to get scheduling done. We're trying to get things like that. Um, plus uh, other commitments, largely on my part. Um, we had we had difficulty with progress in the very beginning. As soon as something took physical form, and people were able to work m more independently or in smaller groups, the progress has completely skyrocketed. It's been actually uh, very good in my opinion, I think. This is a hard question. Uh, this question first and foremost depends on money because developing a course takes time, which costs money. Um, there's questions about whether a course will fill, there's questions about how the course will articulate, what will it mean for students when they transfer. So there's a lot of hard Unfortunately, kind of administrative logistical questions that need to be answered that currently I don't have answers to. Um, so whether there'll be a, a robotics course per se, I think at this point is extremely uncertain. What I think is probably more possible would be more direct support from existing courses. Uh, certainly, existing math and physics courses support this type of a project because they teach they aim to teach those skills that are needed to execute such a project successfully. But the tie there is not so, so direct. This is a sort of fair, fairly indirect link there. So I think that there can be, and it's pretty practical to say that there can be steps taken that improve the direct connection between what we're learning in the classroom and what a project like this needs and reinforces. Uh, another thing that I think could happen is there there is probably some room for courses such as uh, different types of programming courses, computer programming courses or mathematical programming courses. And I can see that uh, in the future sometime I can see there could be a course like that that uh, perhaps uses the, the concept of uh, programming a robot as a, just a gigantic context in which to teach some type of programming. Um, so th that, that might be a potential. And of course there are other potentials, but mm, time will tell. What I, what I hope happens is um, we, we find a way to add structure to this investigation without removing the fun. Uh, the point is that the, the motivation that it gives people is because it's kind of fun to explore with this. What we need to do is provide more reward or uh, measurable progress from the student's perspective for the time that they put into this exploration. If we can find some way to do that, uh, a lab course, a lab space that's a little bit more formal. In the short run, currently it's happening through independent study, which is, which is an interesting venue. Uh, th things along those lines, I think, uh, are doable within the next two years. One of, one of the most interesting things that has come to light as I've watched this process unfold is the role of personality. Uh, different people have very different talents, they have very different things that drive them. Uh, watching a team come together or struggle to come together because of some of those differences has been interesting and I think at the beginning I could have uh, not given enough attention to that factor. 
um, something else that, that, I, that I knew would be there was the motivation that a piece of electronics, especially one that moves and perhaps interacts with an environment, the motivation that something like that can provide to people. Uh, I just underestimated the, the degree to which that motivation actually operates. I've seen students go from being sort of interested in the classroom, all of a sudden they see this and they're putting in hours and hours and hours in the lab. And that has some pretty significant value and potential positive implications for the way I think we teach our courses. So that, that's been something that I, I really hope to investigate uh, a lot more, finding ways to leverage that motivation that, that this sort of object and this sort of investigation can, can apply, this, this motivation that this sort of thing can give you, leverage it to produce uh, harder work in the classroom. Part of that means possibly change the way the classroom looks. I mean, that's not out of the realm of possibility. So I think one thing this process has shown me is that this, this endeavor, this project, provides a, a single thing which functions in two important and complementary ways. Number one, it provides a great source of personal motivation. The energy level of the students when they work on this is significantly higher than what I see in the classroom when they're working on a calculus problem. So it provides a great source of personal motivation, and, and that, that's a powerful force. Number two, it's a, it's a huge supply of very, very, very interesting challenges that uh, can bring on interesting scientific investigation. So the one object, the one medium, functions in these, in these two ways. Uh, the challenges that come up when you try and build something like this, they arise very naturally and they're almost always extremely interdisciplinary. It's almost always lots of things that you would learn in different subjects that need to come together to answer, to do what you want it to do. And that's powerful, I think. That's, that's a really powerful feature of how this thing works. So the challenge on the educator side would be to design a learning experience which channels this motivation as well as the source of interesting questions in such a way that we can provide true and thorough learning of foundational engineering and math skills. I think that's a pretty valid goal. I don't know how that will look. I have some very, very vague ideas. Whether it's possible depends on time, creativity, money. Uh, what I am pretty sure of is that it's going to take pretty significant cross-disciplinary effort. It's going to take faculty from different disciplines working together, and not just in the usual way where we put our courses in line with each other. I mean literally working together to design experiences that engage in this way. Uh, it, it needs to be flexible and exploratory enough that people don't lose that motivation and they, and they still feel that, that urge to discover but not so loose that they can't see the progress. That's an important thing. So how that will happen, I'm not sure. If it happens, or if, if it happens to a certain degree, it'll be a huge success. Uh, what it will allow us to do is demonstrate that the different disciplines in science, as we see them, as we come through college, we see chemistry, we see computer science, we see physics, we see math, and they feel so very disjoint. Uh, if, a, if a learning experience like this were to come to light, this would be a great demonstration that these things are not disjoint. That they're, they're looking at the same thing that humans look at, just possibly through slightly different lenses. All could come together to solve a single problem. Uh, I, I don't feel we currently demonstrate that very well, the way we teach our classes. Robotics, these type of engineering projects, uh, I think is, is a, is a good potential source of context and medium to make that type of a demonstration and to, to demonstrate those uh, interdisciplinary connections.